All right, let's take a look at some unit circle. Um, I'm actually going to break it off into a couple of videos uh, just so that I don't overload any one thing too hard. Um, plus, you can easily skip between things if you already know the degrees of the unit circle. Um, but the unit circle is actually extremely important, um, which is why I personally like to teach it in the first couple of weeks. Um, it's going to be used in calculus very heavily um, to, in order to find out the sine, cosine, and tangents of many angles. Uh, it's used in physics uh, if you're being really quick about trying to figure out what the sine, cosine, or tangent of things are. Um, it's also just good to be able to see those radian and degree conversions in there. So it's a very, very powerful thing if you remember it and you know how to use it. So let's start by just looking at those degrees. Um, this first video, we're just simply going to look at degrees. So if you already know the degrees of the unit circle and you understand why they are what they are, then just go ahead and skip on to the next one. Uh, but the thing that I really need to say about this is the unit circle is comprised of a lot of special right triangles. So if you've forgotten what your special right triangles are, here's a quick reminder. We don't have to worry about the numbers right now. What I really want to concentrate on are the fact that we've got two special right triangles, the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90. Our unit circle is going to be filled with a bunch of these. Um, and as you progress through the videos, you'll see exactly how we create those 30, 60, 90 triangles and those 45, 45, 90 triangles. Uh, again, don't worry about the numbers just yet. Um, so first and foremost, what we need is a unit circle. I created a very, very rough one on here. It's not to scale. Don't worry about that. Because honestly, you're going to get to a point where you can see this in your head and you're going to be able to figure things out without having to draw it. Um, as you can see, some of the lines aren't exactly to scale, um, but again, it doesn't matter because we should be thinking about this in our heads at some point. What really matters here is this positive x-axis, if you imagine it like a coordinate plane with your y-axis here and your x-axis here, this positive x-axis is going to be our standard position. Anytime we talk about an angle on the unit circle, this is our zero degree line. So we're always going to start here with this as our initial side, and then go around the unit circle to get to our terminal side. And if you know anything about circles, then you know that a full circle is 360 degrees. So if you start at your uh, initial side and you go one full circle, your terminal side is going to be exactly where you were again. So I'm going to erase that line just to keep myself a little bit nice and neat and organized. But zero degrees is actually also 360 degrees. So then using that knowledge, it's a pretty quick idea to figure out what this angle is right here. If you start at your initial side and you go halfway around the circle, well, let's take 360 and divide it by 2. Halfway between 0 and 360 is 180 degrees. And then from there, you can probably figure out what the positive y-axis is. Halfway between 0 and 180 is going to be 90 degrees. And usually these little points aren't too bad. It's when we get down here where people tend to stop. Because it's not as intuitive to figure out what is halfway between 180 and 360. Some people are able to instantly figure it out, but others, let's do a little bit of thinking. If you start at your initial position and you go to the 90 degree angle, you've added 90 degrees. If you add another 90 degrees, you get to 180. So in order to get to this bottom one, you add a third 90 degrees. So 90 plus 90 plus 90 tells us that this angle is going to be 270 degrees. Again, I'm going to erase these just to keep myself a little nice, neat, and organized. But this angle down here is positive 270 degrees. So those are what are called the quadrantial angles. Don't worry too much about that word. It basically just means that you're on these axes. And most people can figure those out pretty nicely. But these ones right here are, again, where people are going to have issues. So if we think back to what I said, we have a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle, and we have a 45, 45, 90. Well, those are all going to exist somewhere on the unit circle. So it turns out that this yellow line is going to be 30 degrees away. This is, we're going to go ahead and say, a 30 degree angle. And then if you think more about those triangles, the next one, well, we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And the last one is going to be a 60 from the 30, 60, 90 triangle. 
on the 45, 45, 90 triangle. So once we get the first quadrant down, we can actually use that information to fill out the rest of it. To go from the red line to the blue line, you're going to travel 45 degrees. Well, that 45 splits this quadrant in half. So that means going from the blue line to the red line is going to be another 45 degrees. So from here to here is 45. From here to here is 45. So logically, it follows that from red to blue should be another 45. So if we take 90 degrees and we add 45 to it, we'll end up with 135 degrees. And if we add another 45 to it, we'll get 180 degrees. So as we're going around, we can kind of check to make sure that we haven't made a silly mistake. So 180 plus 45, that means this guy should be 225. If we add another 45 degrees, we get 270. So good, we haven't made a mistake yet. If we add another 45 to get to the next blue line, we'll end up with 315 degrees. And last but not least, take 315 and you add another 45, gives you that 360 degrees. So just by adding 45, we're able to prove these quadrantial angles, and we're able to figure out what these blue angles are. Those are the ones that are going to cut your quadrants in half. So let's look at the next ones. We know we've got a 30, we've got a 60, and we've got a 90 here. Well, it turns out those break these quadrants into thirds. If you temporarily ignore the blue lines, so temporarily ignore the 45s, the ones that we just figured out, knock those out of your minds for a bit, you can see that it's splitting your quadrant into thirds. You've got one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Again, my picture is not drawn to scale, so it's not perfect. But let's go ahead and use that information. The third of this quadrant is going to be 30 degrees. So zero to here is 30 degrees. Add another 30 degrees, and you get to 60. Add another, you get 90. Add another 30 degrees, and you end up with 120. Add another 30 degrees, you end up with 150. So again, we're jumping from red to yellow to green. Red, green, yellow. Red, yellow, green. Red, green, yellow, red. We're skipping the middle lines for now. So to go from 180 to the next, we add another 30 degrees. To go from this yellow to this green, we're going to add another 30 degrees. Green to red, you add 30. Red to green, you add another 30. And green to yellow, you add one more 30. To prove yourself, adding 30 does get you 360. So what we looked at is we were able to figure out that these 30s and 60s break your quadrant into thirds. A third of this quadrant is going to be 30 degrees. So jumping from those lines, you're always going to be adding 30 degrees. Jumping to the 45 degrees, which is the one that cuts it in half, you're always going to be adding 45. Once you catch on to that, you're going to be able to quickly fill out all the degrees on a unit circle as needed. So the next video, we're going to be looking at figuring out how to do radians.